I was talking about how you could club and merge um, different teams and different uh, work streams in one board, Kanban board. And th this is another example for that. So you can actually have, for example, if you are starting a project with has a, a, a software component as well as hardware. So for example, you need to procure some infrastructure, you need to, you need to buy some servers, you need to actually have some client machines. So you need to have some of these, and then you need to have some of the control agents and things like that on the hardware side then you can actually try and track both of these in the same. So depending on if there's a dependency for the software and the hardware or vice versa, you can actually track it easily. Then you can actually you know, draw some lines between these and say that, okay, this is still dependent, it's not done. So you can track those kind of uh, uh, the, 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 the front loading or the back loading kind of dependencies on this. And, and again, very, very useful. We'll talk about one example. Yeah, this is the example I have caught for you. So if you have got, for example, um, two uh, teams in your um, organization, both of them working on the same product. And this product has got, let's say, there's a core product, which has got the front end, which is the presentation layer. And this team is, for example, working on the Angular, JavaScript, and React.js. That's the kind of technology space and the technology stack that they are working on. And the yellow team is actually working on the back end, the database. So they are actually trying to put together the scripts for running the database for actually creating the tables and then pushing the data into the data lake. So they are the uh, data uh, specialist team. But you need to have both of them to make sure that we have got the final uh, platform working, right? So it cannot be uh, either or. It needs to be both. Unless you've got the data in there, you cannot pull it out. Unless you have got something to show, the customer will not see what is in the database. So there is a dependency on that. Like they need to go in tandem. And that's where you need to track, for example, you can actually track in the same uh, instance, you've got same uh, board, Kanban board could be tracked in this way. So you track this board saying that I need to club this one. I need to have the these five tasks done. And then I actually put the tasks of the database team here, or I can actually club this. Okay, first do these two tasks. We need to have a database, then pull the data, show it on the front end. And once we show it on the front end, the customer can change it, right? For example, if you can show on a web page there's an edit functionality. Once you edit that, if you've got an edit functionality, the values are changed. That means they need to be updated and inserted into the database again. So there needs to be another you know, database functionality there. So here you're trying to actually mix and match and try and plan how you can structure your, your, your product roadmap, the release. Your release planning is driven by the dependencies of these two different teams, the front end team and the back end team. So then you can actually kind of see that clearly using this Kanban board. You can actually see that this is a product green, which is the front end. It is here, it is here. These are the two ta tasks done. They're still not done with this, blah, blah, blah. So you can actually get to see the, the dependencies, the flow and how work is actually going, and being streamlined across these two teams, not just within, but also across. So that's the beauty of this aggregated status. And um, another important thing with respect to the uh, aspect of an artifact of, uh, of uh, Kanban is the cumulative uh, flow diagram. Something like if you could recollect what we have, an equivalent version of that, it's not exactly the same, but an equivalent version of this in Scrum and that's called the burn down chart, right? The sprint burn down chart. Similarly, here we've got a cumulation. You're actually talking, it's the, you can actually kind of treat it as an opposite or, 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 or the different way of looking at it from what we have in the burn down chart. So we start with the burn down chart here, depending on the amount of work that is still to be completed. So it goes like this. So the chart or the graph goes from uh, the uh, top uh, left to bottom right. It goes like this. Whereas the CFT, the, the community flow diagram in Kanban is slightly different. It's, it actually starts with how much of work have you completed over a period of time? So what is the work still to be done? What is the work that is done? And then there is an aspect of cycle time and lead time. So that is the difference between these two. So which is basically a metric that can be used uh, pretty much like velocity in, uh, in Scrum. We actually have the cycle time and the lead time that are measured, that are assessed and, and uh, practiced in, uh, in Kanban. So without, um, without trying to confuse you. So this is another way of actually addressing that um, the, the CFD, the cumulative flow diagram. You can actually get to see that it actually builds up over a period of time. It's not, it's not building down, it's not going down like burning down the effort, but it's actually kind of assessing and measuring up the work that is actually done over a period of time. So 
when you look at Monday, there's not much work, but if you look at Tuesday, it actually is, is increased. So you're actually delivering more and more work and it is moving. So if you can see that ready for approval is, is yellow and that is actually on the rise as you complete, as you look at Thursday. And same with, uh, for example, in testing. So at different phases of or different steps in the process, where is what piece of work and how much of, of work has been done. So that's the beauty of actually the CFD. You can get it with one glance. And it's again, a very, um, very popular tool within Kanban.